these seven bowls fill up or complete the wrath of God. Yes. We have seen much of God's judgment up to this point. Uh, and as I said last week, and I've meditated on this thought many times since I said it, it's very difficult for me as a theologian to, to even try to conceive the fullness or the completeness of anything of God being revealed at one time. Because God, God is so infinite, omnis, omniscient, all-powerful, to put everything, the completeness of God's expression of judgment in one series of actions is tremendous. Seven bowls of God's wrath, chapter 16 and verse 1. I'm going to have you help me tonight, if you will. Uh, would someone read verse 1 for us, please? Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven <clears throat> angels, Go and pour out the bowls of wrath of God on the earth. So God himself gives this command for this final judgment. These seven bowls of God's wrath uh, are more intense than the seven judgments that came with the trumpets. The seven trumpet judgments offered a longer duration of, of judgment and also gave a hope of repentance. Uh, but when these seven bowls are poured out, it is immediate and final judgment that will end all of the ungodliness and the evil that is on the earth. In fact, when this is finished, chapter 16, 17, 18, when, by the time we get through with those chapters, Satan, his kingdom, the Antichrist, his false government and worship will have been destroyed. So really, <clears throat> We, we look at this as judgment and wrath. It is also a, a transition from the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of this world to the kingdom of our God and his Christ. The seven trumpet judgments seem to me when we were studying them to be so very intense. Do you remember them? A third of the population, a third of the waters, a third, a, a third, a third, a third was destroyed or died. It was an amazing amount of things that happened. The first four bowls or bowl judgments brings judgment on the environment and on mankind. And the last three are directed toward the Antichrist and his kingdom. The language indicates a rapid pouring out of God's wrath at the end of the tribulation. Now, I'm going to go through these in pretty rapid succession tonight. Uh, I want to get all seven bowls covered in this one setting. The first bowl was poured out upon the earth in verse 2. Someone please read for us. So the first bowl went and poured out his upon the earth and the foul and the loathsome sword came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. So the first bowl was poured upon the earth and it, this reminds me of judgments that happened in Egypt and others. Sores came upon men everyone who takes the mark of the beast. Pause a second and think about this. Those who worship the beast by taking the mark of the beast thought within themselves that they were escaping and also aligning themselves with something that would prosper them. It was a form of worship. Now, everyone 
on the face of the earth, and this is not regional, this is on the face of the earth, who has taken the mark of the beast and worshiped his image will receive these foul and loathsome sores. The second bowl is poured out upon the sea. Someone read, please. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. Whoa, this is not a third. In the trumpet, second trumpet, a third of the water of the sea was turned to blood. Now, all of the sea is turned to blood, and every living creature in the sea dies. It's hard to get your mind around that, isn't it? Yeah. Could I ask a question? Well, they're, they're saying the sea, and I know there's seas in that area. They mean all of the waters. All waters. Okay, that's right. It's not. Thank you for the question. Now's a good time to ask it. Uh, a lot of, some theologians, not a, not a lot, think that the tribulation is regional only around the Mediterranean Sea. It, it, it's inconceivable when you read the language of the, the revelation that that is the case. So when it says the sea, it's talking all of the waters of the ocean. That is a vast amount of water. That's right. What about the inland water? This is talking about the sea, the sea at this time. The next, the next one covers that. The third bowl is poured up out upon the fresh water. Someone read verse four. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. So, in the third trumpet, a third of the fresh water was made bitter with wormwood. Now, by this time, all of the waters on the earth will be made blood. Someone read verse 5, please. And I heard the angel of the water saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things. Continue reading, Bill, please. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. And I heard another from the altar saying, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Whoa. Look at that last sentence. Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Now, think about this. God is not being unrighteous in his judging a, a wicked world. He has given opportunity upon opportunity and has extended grace, even to the extent that God sent an angel from heaven to declare the gospel around the whole earth. The fourth bowl is poured out upon the sun. Revelation 16 and verse 8, someone read for me, please. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given him to scorch men with fire. <laughs> so with the fourth trumpet, a third of the sun, moon, and stars were darkened. With this bowl, the intensity of the sun will be made greater than ever has been. So that men will be scorched with fire from the sun. There's a, a dramatic change that is taking place. L let me pause again, and, and I want you to think about this. There is no one that could cause this to happen but God Almighty. This is not climate change. It is not political. It is not a result of man's actions. This comes from the throne of God, and God is causing this to happen upon the earth. Verse number 9. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over these plagues. 
and they did not repent and give him glory. Wow. Now, if we go back to the trumpet judgments, many people, when they happened, they repented of the evil that was in their heart. Here, they did not repent, but rather they accused God and blamed God for the things that were happening. Don't answer, but do you know anybody that they blame God for every bad thing that happens to them? Well, this is exactly what's going to happen. They will accuse God for the things that come upon the face of the earth. The fifth bowl is poured out upon the beast's throne or kingdom. Verse number 10. Someone, please. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. And his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. This is a physical darkness as well as a spiritual darkness, I believe. But this is specific. It falls upon the kingdom of the Antichrist, upon him and all who follow him. So there's... There is a question that arises in my mind. How extensive is the kingdom of the Antichrist? We know from what we have read thus far and studied that he has those 10 kingdoms that are under him and they are pretty massive. And if, if, if we are confining them to the kingdoms that they represent from of old, it's all of the regions from that we would consider to be Europe, Asia, North Africa, all the way over to India, a, a massive region. Uh, this darkness appears to exacerbate or make worse the pain and sores of the previous bowl judgments. Their pain is great, yes. and they can find no, no relief. Uh, verse number 11. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their souls. They did not repent of their deeds. So again, just as previously, there is no redemptive quality in the judgment that is taking place. But they blaspheme the God of heaven. This tells us several things. First and foremost, it tells us the people of the earth will know that this is a judgment that is coming from God. And they did not repent of their deeds. The sixth bowl is poured out upon the Euphrates River. Uh, the sixth bowl comes in two parts. The first part opens a way for the kings of the east uh, and the rage of Satan. The second part is the Lord's announcement that he is coming as a thief to meet at Armageddon. Verse number 12. Someone read, please. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river in Euphrates, and its water is dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Now, I've noticed, I, I try to pay attention to some things that are going on in our world. Uh, many are saying that the Euphrates River is drying up. It's drier now than it has ever been. Some think that this is a precursor to this, uh, I, I have multiple ideas about it myself. First of all, I do not think that God needs to depend upon climate change to bring about his judgment. God is a sovereign, almighty God. Amen. Could this drying up of the Euphrates be the preemptive action that God is taking to bring about this, absolutely. And if that is so, you better wake up because we're within four, 
years, five years of this. Wow. wow. This is different than the sixth trumpet when four fallen angels are released and given authority over 200 million demonic hosts. The drying of the Euphrates River opens up a way for the kings of the east to come with a major military threat toward Israel. Now, here is what's going on, and a lot of people have got these things confused, what I just mentioned to you. Some think that the 200 million are armies from China that will move into Israel. Now the Bible says those are demonic hosts that will be released from the bottomless pit. When the Euphrates is dried up, here's what's going to happen. This is preparing the way for the Battle of Armageddon. China, India, Japan, Asia, I think Russia, just all of the nations of the world are going to be coming to Israel for the great and final war. You know, there's really, as we look at it in the scriptures, there, there's no clear definition concerning these armies. I believe, in its personal opinion, that the 200 million demon horsemen of the sixth trumpet relate in some way to this, but it's, it's all coming together because God is bringing an end. The battle of Armageddon is going to happen because God is bringing an end. They gather around Israel for the battle of Armageddon. Verse number 13. Bill, would you read, please? <clears throat> And I, saw, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So these are demonic spirits that are sent to perform miracles to deceive the nations, leaders, and the kings of the world. And they come out of the mouth of Satan, the dragon, the beast, the antichrist, and the false prophet, who is the second beast out of the sea. Verse 14, somebody please. For they are spirits of demons performing, performing signs which go out to the king of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of, my, of God Almighty. So these demon spirits go out from Satan the Antichrist and the false prophet and they persuade or convince the armies, the leaders of the whole world to gather together at the Battle of Armageddon against the coming of Jesus Christ. So there is a, a resistance that is arising. You see, Satan is going to be inflamed with vengeance against God for what God is doing at this time. Verse 15 and 16. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called Hebrew Armageddon. So in the Hebrew, it's called Armageddon. <laughs> so God, God is saying, here is what's, about to happen or is happening. Satan is moving and influencing everyone in the earth that he has any influence over. And these demon spirits that come from Satan's confederacy go out and convince the peoples of the world who are not in harmony with God. And friends, at this time, from what we have seen transpire, uh, there is not much godly influence left on the earth at this moment. That's right. 
So here, God is, God is allowing, may I even go so far as to say, even inspiring Satan to bring this to pass at this moment. You need to know this, that the battle of Armageddon is not Satan's idea. It's not man's idea. It's God bringing together a moment when judgment and wrath is coming. In this last hour before the battle of Armageddon, the Lord gives this blessing to every believer who remains on the earth. Now, I, I say that, and again, as we said last week, I really question believers left on the earth. I really, I, I don't understand. I really don't. Because we have seen the rapture of the church at the beginning. We've seen the mid-tribulation saints who were martyred, who were raised, who were around the throne. We saw those that, that were in the latter half of the tribulation that were raised. And it, it appears that God has extended mercy and grace and mercy and grace. Obviously, even at this late hour, there will be people on the earth who have not taken the mark of the beast. I don't know how. Seems impossible. If you cannot buy or sell, mm -hmm. your ability to get food would be dependent on the goodwill of anyone who has taken the mark of the beast, who has the ability to buy and sell, or your ability to hide in the hills and valleys and in caves and scrounge. There's going to be a lot of people that are, I, I don't mean this comical, on a starvation diet. They're just barely going to be making it. Especially when you consider all of the water on the earth being turned to blood. That's right. right. So as I, as I consider all of this, when the Lord said, Behold, I'm coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. The Lord is, is telling whoever is left on the earth, that you need to be very careful to be as close to God as you can in this late hour. They've kept themselves undefiled up to this time, and they will be blessed if they persevere in this last hour. Garments always in the scripture uh, the garments of the saints has always been a picture of the righteousness of believers. This is good news for them that the Lord is coming quickly. You know, in my estimation of things, if you've gone all of this time, <laughs> you're ready for the Lord to come. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, review once again uh, Armageddon, where it's located. We did this earlier. I want to do it once again. Uh, Armageddon, or the, the, ba the Valley of Jezreel, is all the way up here in the north. Megiddo or, is where this battle will start. From Megiddo down to Petra is 200 miles. Blood will flow for 200 miles up to the horse's bridle. This is a picture of the Kishon River and, and the Jezreel Valley, which is this valley where Armageddon will start, the Battle of Armageddon. If you follow closely, uh, I don't have a picture of this 
at this point. Uh, on the west side of Jerusalem, there is a valley. This valley that goes here follows this mountain range and it's the same valley. It's the Kidron Valley. Uh, that is the valley where the graves are. Uh, the valley of Megiddo or Jezreel has been a location of many battles throughout history. Deborah over Sisera, Gideon over the Midianites, Pharaoh over Josiah. More than 200 battles have been fought in this, in this valley from 1468 to 1917. Think about it. Armageddon will be the place, the location of this last great battle between Satan, the Antichrist, their government, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Armies from all nations of the world, can you imagine this? All of the armies of all of the world will be coming, flocking to this place. Can, the mere numbers. I, I read one uh, commentator, and he was skeptical of this. He said there are not enough people, in his opinion, to, to cause that much blood to flow for 200 miles. Well, if God says that it's going to happen, it's going to happen. This area will be an unparalleled, unparalleled collection of human armies. We have never seen a battle this intense. The seventh bowl is going to be poured out into the air. Verse 17, someone please read then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. It is done is an, an announcement of judgment on the ungodly and the evil armies of the world. By this judgment, all of the nations will be wiped out by God's judgment. Wow. Verse 18. There were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as heart had not occurred since men were on the earth. Can you imagine that? An earthquake that is of greater intensity than we have ever seen on the earth. I don't know if you've been paying attention to this, but for some reason, my news app on my phone keeps bringing up the earthquakes that are taking place right now across the earth. They are increasing in intensity and they are showing up in places where they have never been before. What is going on? I will tell you what is going on. In the last days, there will be earthquakes in various places. There will be pestilence. There will be increased violence. Yes. Jerusalem will be shaken and divided into three parts and God will pour the fierceness of his wrath on Babylon, the capital of the Antichrist, and it will be destroyed. Look at this. Uh, verse 19. Now the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of, of the nations, the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of God's wrath. Verse 20. Then every island fled away and the mountains were not found. Can you take that literally? I take it literally. Can you imagine every island being moved? And every mountain disappearing. We're mighty close to some mountains. We're in the mountains. 
It's my opinion that the earth as we know it is going to be broken up. A dramatic change is coming to the face of the globe. Verse 21. And great hell from heaven fell upon men, each hellstone about the weight of a talent, or between 75 and 100 pounds. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell since the plague was exceedingly great. I've been in some hell storms. When we were pastoring in Missouri, we had a hell storm that hit the church and we had softball sized hell that went completely through our metal roof. This is hell that weighs a hundred pounds. That's heavy hell. And not just heavy hell, it is extensive. God is going to judge the people of the earth. These are the seven bowls of God's wrath. This is extensive. Wow. Let me encourage you. If this has not encouraged you, be ready. Yes, be ready. You have time right now to be ready for the first trumpet sound when the dead in Christ will rise and we will go to be with the Lord. I want to be ready. And I want you to be ready.